name's Carol Day. I'm a lifelong uh, return resident, and I'm chair of Vapor. And uh, I started Vapor with a group of wonderful citizens, uh, mostly from Richmond, some from Delta. And uh, the purpose of our group is to uh, oppose the v VAFFC's proposal for a jet fuel marine terminal and a um, tank farm on the south arm of the Fraser River. Well, the VAFFC, which is the Vancouver Airport Fuel Facilities Corporation, and it's a group of about 18 airlines that have proposed running a jet fuel pipeline from the airport all the way through Richmond to the south end of Richmond where they would like to build a marine facility and tank farm. The reason that they want this proposal is because it would be give them the most control and the best cost saving. I have yet to talk to one single person who says that they're in favor of, of this proposal. Well, just recently, um, the VAFFC uh, put forward a, a document to the city of Richmond saying that they're willing to look at other options. And one of the options they put forth at this point, as of this recording of this interview, is that they are looking, the VAFFC is looking at considering the north arm of the Fraser River. And of course, Sea Island is on the north arm of the Fraser River, which is where the airport lives, is Sea Island. This is not acceptable. That uh, proposal was presented many years ago, about 15 years ago, and it was absolutely turned down for environmental reasons. And I mean, I could go into great detail about that, but the reality is it's not a good idea to run jet fuel up and down the Fraser River or any part of the Fraser River estuary. The north arm is just as fragile. We don't want to see the transport of jet fuel by tanker in any shape or form up into our estuary. The Fraser River Coalition has been fighting since 1969 to preserve the wetlands, the last beautiful, precious remaining wetlands of the Fraser River, and we're not going to give it away to this ill-conceived um, uh, um, proposal. But I seem to hear mostly highlighted is pipeline. Um, ignites fear, pipeline this, pipeline that, but I think there hasn't been enough emphasis in the news and media with regards to the actual tankers themselves and the tank farm. It seems that the pipeline has ignited most of the fear. Well, you know, it's not just the pipeline. The, what, what Vapor is against, ultimately, is the marine facility and the tank farm planned for the south arm of the Fraser River. It is a major threat to the estuary and uh, fish habitat, wildlife, um, everything from birds to people would be threatened by this proposal. And the AFFC has said, well, there are going to be small spills and they're really not that significant. Well, any spill is significant in the Fraser River, and it could kill fish and wildlife for years to come, and the risk is just too high. This statement is from Environment Canada, dated August 17th, 2011, and they state, the project would present a new and unacceptable risk to locally, nationally, internationally important fish and wildlife populations of the Fraser River estuary. This includes migratory birds and species at risk. And this 14-page uh, document goes on and on and on to explain that more research needs to be done, more environmental assessment has to be done, and certainly other options need to be looked at and very, very close to the actual proposed site is uh, a large condominium complex where hundreds of people live. And uh, very close to that also is the um, Riverport Amusement Center in Richmond, uh, the Entertainment Boulevard, where there's everything from bowling alleys to movie theaters to ice rinks, swimming pools. And it's not acceptable to have a marine terminal which is going to basically be uh, offloading jet fuel into six six-story high jet fuel tanks that are about well, a very short distance like less than 50 meters from the water's edge. We feel that it's the worst possible proposal because it puts marine life and the Fraser River estuary at great harm's risk. It also puts people who live very, very close to the proposed uh, area at incredible risk. If there's ever a jet fuel tank farm explosion or pipeline explosion, those people's lives would be in great peril. And the problem is, is that if there's ever an accident, it's a very difficult location to get to for fire trucks. It's gridlocked during 
causing uh, rush hour traffic, and it's just a not acceptable proposal. I contacted uh, Deputy Fire Chief um, Tom Wilkinson, and, and he is asking him a few questions about what our response would be to that area. Um, he indicated that it would be about a nine minute response, and um, which was approximately twice uh, the standard response. I live at uh, 14300 Riverport Way, uh, approximately 350 meters from the proposed marine terminal. The two suites that have actually sold in the last couple months um, have gone for 5 to 10 percent less than the 2006 selling price. So obviously um, uh, I'm worried about my investment. I don't know if you've seen the uh, video from the Miami tank farm fire that they had there caused by a fuel pump and it was qu um, quite an intense fire and they actually had a, a, a fire su suppression system built into the tank farm there and the fire was so hot it actually melted that system before it could deploy. Ourselves, um, fellow neighbors, fellow residents, fellow owners of this complex of Waterstone Pier as well as the adjacent Riverport complex itself, we are in daily fear of this. I have to actually say um, it has personally made many of us physically ill with the thought of this having um, living next door to this proposal. Um, I myself would like to see the bloodletting stop soon and I apologize for being emotional here. If the VAFFC could own and operate their own marine terminal, they could control everything from what they bring in, how they bring it in, and where they bring it in from. And they don't have to deal with any outside um, authorities such as the Cherry Point Refinery or the Burnaby Refinery. And uh, it's all about control and it's certainly about saving money. I'm part of Vapor. I'm a retired system safety engineer and I've been investigating mainly the safety aspects of this kind of project. My biggest concern is that in their initial submission, they made no description of what the hazard footprint of this project is. And the hazard footprint entails determining what's the worst case scenario of an accident that could take place. The biggest threat, of course, to the estuary and to the Fraser River is the Panamax freighters that would be going up and down. These tankers are massive and uh, they're the size of numerous football fields. Uh, and the problem is they're so large that these uh, tankers wouldn't be able to go up and down the Fraser River. They would have to offload some of the jet fuel onto barges, which would then be towed up the south arm of the Fraser River to the tank farm. The um, risk to the marine life and to the the birds and people is just phenomenal, but the location just couldn't be worse. You have to keep in mind that these tankers and these barges would be towed and, and driven over the Massey Tunnel. Accidents do happen, and even the VAFFC has stated in their report that um, spills are a certainty, and they predict the probability of a 50 barrel spill every six years and a thousand barrel spill every 30 years. And this would impact the river, human safety, recreation, habitat, the fishery and wildlife. The VAFFC simply suggests that dispersion in evapor evaporation will be the solution. Well, the fuel is um, stabilized for um, movement by all sorts of chemicals and those chemicals are deadly to the environment. Uh, you mentioned a thousand barrels uh, spill. Uh, everybody knows if you drop a drop of drop of oil in water how, how quickly it, it, it covers the water. How, how, how much area could a thousand barrels cover? It's a very light fuel. You could easily, uh, and we've seen pictures of 50 barrels in the uh, a much larger river. And it'll cover the river from one bank to another. 1,000 barrels is 160,000 liters. That's a lot of fuel, and you would actually have measurable amounts building up in back eddy shoreline areas, and that's when it would get into the sediments and 
pollute the soils and then it could stay there for months on end. Or there's a great concern immediately downstream, you have a wildlife red coated area, you have fin slough, you have shady island, and then it'll get through the hole in the wall onto sturgeon banks, plus you've got the best part of the estuary across the river, the Richmond Islands, and it'd get into Canoe Pass, all those areas, it'd be quite a disaster. There's two options that Vapor supports. Um, option three is upgrading the existing pipeline that goes to the refinery in Burnaby, British Columbia. Uh, the, the pipeline currently is about 35 years old and could use upgrading, and that would certainly be the least intrusive. Uh, but an even better option that we've really been studying the last four months is option eight, which is running a brand new pipeline from Vancouver International Airport down Highway 99, under the Fraser River, down, continuing down Highway 99 and I-5 and all the way to the Cherry Point Refinery in Washington State. That is one of the largest and safest marine terminals on the West Coast and in, actually in America. And it makes more logical sense to pipe the jet fuel from that location which is already in existence. The benefit to option eight would be that the tankers and uh, the barges will no longer have to travel up any arms of the Fraser River. In fact, the fuel could all come from the Cherry Point refinery. And the VAFFC could purchase that fuel from anywhere in the world, have it delivered to that refinery, and subsequently have it sent up. And I should note that right now the Cherry Point Refinery in Washington State does have a pipeline going to, Alt, uh, to Abbotsford and, um, and then f further on to the um, uh, Alberta tar sands. So there is already a pipeline in effect and it's working, it's successful. So we feel that that option should be studied and should be supported by the airlines rather than the one that puts the Fraser River and the people of Richmond at great risk. I think it's important to note that we have a lot of support in the community and behind me I've got over 5,000 signatures from people all over the Lower Mainland that are very much opposed to any jet fuel being shipped on the Fraser River or the estuary. So it's, this isn't a small issue, this is a becoming a more and more global issue and I think that the airlines need to step back and think about the other options. So Vapor opposes the proposal primarily due to safety, environmental issues, and the fact that there are other options. So when the VAFFC studied these options, they studied 14 altogether, they discounted them. And you have to ask yourself why. Well, the obvious answer is money and power. The VAFFC wants to control the um, jet fuel that comes into the Vancouver International Airport. There are better options out there. They just don't give them quite the, op the um, power and the money saving that the option that they have um, put forward. What Vapor would like to see is um, a meeting of the minds of the city of Richmond, the, env the environmental experts, and Vapor and the VAFFC. And up until now, they have absolutely refused to meet with us. And we've sent letters upon letters to all the airlines involved in this consortium and have received cookie cutter answers to our questions and certainly not listening to the people of Richmond and the things that we're, that we're most concerned about. So what we really like, we're really pleased that uh, the city of Richmond agreed um, to write letters to each and every one of the airlines and we provided that information to the city of Richmond. The city of Richmond was also unaware of the Environment Canada report. Um. Explain the Environment Canada. Extreme. It's from environment, Environmental Protection Operations in the Environmental Canada Environmental Stewardship Branch, Pacific and Yukon, Broad Street. If you could leave that with us, yeah. uh, and I'm sure that we'll want to take a long look at it before we're finished. So we presented that report to them uh, just recently at a council meeting. And we're perfectly happy to work with the City of Richmond, with the province of British Columbia and Environment Canada as a team member to find a better solution to jet fuel needs of the Vancouver International Airport. There's answers out there. We just need to be open-minded. Please write to Air Canada and the other airlines in the VAFFC consortium and tell them how you feel and how 4,000, 5,000 people feel that we have to look at other options. Created in good faith by a grassroots group of citizens concerned about the future health of the World Heritage Fraser River, its wetlands, and the people and wildlife dependent on it. Any errors or admissions are unintentional.